Godt. Velkommen her til uh, pressemødet. Could I welcome you to this press conference? First of all, some uh, initial comments. It's uh, been a great pleasure to host the first informal council meeting during the Danish presidency. We're facing a series of major challenges, in particular in the area that we've been focusing on today. In many areas, uh, there are these uh, challenges which we uh, have to grapple with and uh, we have to live up to uh, our obligations and uh, try to find solutions to the problems facing Europe. Today, we've been discussing a number of uh, central questions. We've been looking at uh, solidarity, the concrete expression of solidarity this morning. We looked at the Commission's green paper on family reunification during lunch, and this afternoon we've been discussing inter alia the question of financing member states' implementation of the so-called PNR systems. In other words, how we implement EU rules to combat terrorism. We've got uh, half an hour now for questions. I'll just briefly run through the main topics. And uh, Cecilia Malmström, the Commissioner for Home Affairs, will also tell you something about what we've been saying. But uh, we've had some very uh, constructive contributions. We've had more than 25 uh, uh, of my colleagues uh, and Cecilia, of course, uh, with us. We've had Antonio Guterres uh, for the UNHCR. We've had uh, representatives from the agencies connected to uh, justice and home affairs as well. We started this morning looking at the issue of solidarity. For a long time, solidarity has been a key word when we discuss how we tackle the future of asylum policy, more specifically, how we can come up with an overall asylum package uh, by the deadline of 2012. And it's a key term when we uh, look at uh, the management of uh, migration flows, and that's why we're looking at it today. And I think we can conclude from today's discussion that uh, unless we have mutual trust, then uh, there isn't much point in talking about solidarity between member states. So we need to discuss the issue of solidarity. We uh, are looking to achieve uh, better use of existing instruments and look at other mechanisms which could uh, improve the delivery of solidarity. What we're talking about uh, in concrete terms is uh, uh, creating a new toolbox, as it were, of instruments that we could use so that in a genuine and practical way we can deliver solidarity. Our intention is uh, that at the Council meeting in March we can uh, develop this project so that the Council can uh, propose a set of conclusions which we can discuss which uh, can help us move forward because everybody agrees that uh, we uh, should make progress here. And uh, this could be a practical and genuine way to uh, actually uh, make use of uh, mutual trust in uh, helping member states facing particular problems. We also talked about a rapid alert and preparedness uh, uh, system which we're trying to incorporate into the Dublin uh, regulation. We're pleased that there, were broad, there was broad support for that. We've also, of course, discussed the question of Schengen cooperation and cooperation with third countries in the area of migration. 
And it's important to, to look at how we can strengthen the position of the agencies involved in practical cooperation. There was also a clear conclusion that uh, there isn't support in the Council to take any further the idea of internal reallocation of uh, refugees. There's a voluntary uh, pilot scheme uh, for Malta, which we'll continue discussing, and uh, we'll make sure there's a proper assessment of that. But we can only consider future possible uh, reallocation schemes once we've got that assessment. Moving on to PNR systems. I think there are no doubts that uh, we're faced with serious challenges in terms of terrorism threats and serious uh, crime. Now, last February, the Commission proposed a directive on the use of PNR information. On the basis of today's discussion, I think we can say that there's solid backing from member states for that project. Everybody can see that it would uh, create added value. We're all aware of the very serious threats facing certain member states. So the presidency certainly wants to maintain uh, mo the momentum in the discussions. And so today we've been looking at the financing of PNR systems. We did this on the basis of the financial support instrument, which is something recently proposed by the Commission uh, for the purposes of police cooperation and the prevention and combating of crime. Um, we've discussed whether we should incorporate the financing of PNR systems in that proposal so that we can provide assurances to member states that there would be uh, support for the uh, costs of setting up the system in member states. So apart from the fact, as I said earlier, that there's solid backing for the PNR system, discussions in Council today demonstrated that there is support for this model, that uh, there should be substantive financial assistance available uh, for the setting up of the system in member states. So uh, as President of the uh, Council, uh, uh, very pleased uh, that uh, there is support for the PNR system and also the proposals we had on the agenda today about the funding. So we uh, have moved the project forward. During lunch, we discussed the Commission's green paper on uh, f family reunification from last November. This green paper kicked off a public consultation process on experience from uh, the existing legislation. And could I stress that this was just a, 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 an initial uh, political discussion, but I think I can safely say that uh, there was a very clear focus on risks and the need to protect our rules from abuse in the area of uh, family reunification. We're looking forward to continuing the consultation process so that we can uh, continue our discussion of the Green Paper and we in the Danish Presidency will uh, make sure that uh, this discussion can move forward. But. Uh, uh, this was just uh, very much a preliminary initial political uh, look at this question. That was my introduction. Now I'd like to give Cecilia Malmström, Commissioner for Home Affairs, the floor. Speak in English. Um, I would like to thank the Danish Presidency and the, and the Minister for a very well organised meeting, ending in time. And keeping our, um, the speaking short and concise, and also for feeding us so well. We had a wonderful lunch, so thank you very much for giving us the best of the Danish cuisine. Uh, I will not dwell too much about, upon this because uh, the minister already described quite thoroughly what was said. Uh, we appreciate very much from the Commission side the morning discussion on solidarity. 
an important issue, uh, not only in some sort of academic terms, but also concrete solidarity. The European Union today is showing solidarity in, in many ways, for instance in Greece, where basically all the European Union institution, agencies and member states are active and contributing to help implement the action plan on asylum uh, in Greece and also have been active in uh, helping to, to uh, build up a functioning border system via the rabbit operation and will continue to do so in the future. Uh, I think there was in general a willingness to, to be solidaric and to show uh, solidarity. Now, of course, we have to move on and to, to be even more concrete and to assemble the toolbox. It, concise, it, it comprises many items. Of course, we have the, the, the financial uh, part of this toolbox. We also have the... Um, the concrete support to the agencies, to the ASO, the Asylum Support Office, and Frontex, the border agency, where member states, in order for these agencies to, to do what uh, they're asked to do, will need the contribution of member states' uh, staff and expertise. Uh, and that we talked very much about. I'm also extremely happy that we now seem to move towards a joint agreement that in the Dublin Convention, that the, the presidency is, is negotiating right now in the form of the asylum package, there seems to be an agreement that we do need an evaluation, an early warning system, so we very early can detect problems in a member state's asylum system and help and mobilize to minimize the costs, but also minimize the human, uh, human suffering. Then, of course, when there is an emergency, we need to see how we can continue to, to support uh, this as well. I'm also extremely happy that we are now very, very close to an agreement uh, with the European Parliament on the European Resettlement Program. I want to thank the, the, the former presidencies and the Danish presidency for, for reaching an agreement in the Council. This will mean a lot for us to pool our resources to help in the countries outside the European Union, where the situation remains, as you said in your introduction, Morten, remains fragile and the need for solidarity will be strong also in the future. Uh, on the lunch, a helpful discussion, the consultation paper on the Family Reunification Directive is out for consultation. The deadline is the 1st of March, so it is not possible to draw any conclusions there. I think the general feeling among the ministers was that there was not a huge appetite to change the directive, but we identified some challenges relating to uh, integration problems, and that's where we will now sit in the Commission together with the Presidency to see how we can elaborate uh, best practices, maybe guidance for Member States when it comes to, to false marriages and frauds, uh, etc. And we certainly come back to this once the consultation period is over. And on PNR, I can only confirm what you said. Uh, there's, of course, a lot of, of technical and political issues related to this, but we are also uh, discussing how we should co-finance this system. Once they are set up, the Commission will, of course, co-finance the, the setting up of the systems, but Member States will also have to contribute and also with the running of the systems. Uh, but we will have to sit and elaborate exact sums of this and also, uh, of course, during this, the Danish presidency and also um, in, the, in the coming uh, six months, they will be starting the discussions on the financial perspective for the coming years, and that's where the sums and the, 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 the figures will come in, and that uh, discussion will not take today, I think. <laughs> so summing up, it's been a good and great day, and we are all looking forward to, to uh, also this evening, um, and then the, the council continues tomorrow. That's right. Okay, we have time for a couple of questions. Yes, here in front. Uh, yes, there's a microphone for you here. Hi, Alexandra mayer Hodal with the German Press Agency, DPA. Commissioner, a question for you. Um, you've often called on member states to do more in solidarity. Is the early um, warning system enough now that the uh, suspension of Dublin II and the relocation program are off the table? No, it's not enough. I mean, first of all, we need to have the European asylum system in place. That's the best way to show solidarity, that all of us have a basic system where people who really need uh, shelter in Europe can get that according to open, transparent, fair and equal procedures. And that is my main priority during my mandate, to get this in place. And I know this is one of the priorities of the Danish presidency as well, to move on uh, here. Um, the the um, early warning mechanism in Dublin is one important tool to prevent and to preempt uh, things from deteriorating. But we need to do more. Uh, I have called upon member states to do more in internal relocation, for instance, in Malta. Some countries have responded, some could have done more. Um, 
Now, we have never proposed from the Commission side to do a compulsory system, but encourage countries to do so, and we also have financial means from the Commission uh, to, to, to support that. And also, I mean, solidarity is not only between member states, but 80%, as uh, High Commissioner Guterres reminded us, of the refugees in the world are not in Europe. They are in, in developing countries. So, so with our fragile neighbourhood, there will be a need to, to, uh, to show solidarity there as well. But it was a good and, and quite open discussion, so I welcome it. Okay, talk. So I have the in here. In the behind. Yes, you. Yes. You need a microphone, sorry. Thank you. I would like to ask both of you if you have made any progress uh, concerning the Schengen Agreement and the joining of uh, Bulgaria and Romania. And I also would like to ask both of you uh, how you think about the Dutch blocking of the joining of these two countries. First of all, uh, the issue was not on the agenda today, uh, but a, a it will be an issue that we will uh, try to handle as, as effective as, and as good as possible under the Danish presidency. Um, one main point from the Danish presidency is that uh, we cannot and should not develop a system of double standards. Uh, there are uh, no obstacles that Romania and uh, Bulgaria shouldn't be a part of the Schengen system. This is the fundamental view of the Danish presidency, and that's what we are working for and after. Is it and it? the commission fully shares that view. Yes. You, down here. My name is Christoph Prössel, German Public Radio. I have a question on this um, early warning mechanism. What is the difference to the asylum uh, office, which is under construction? And I, I can't see where the difference is, because I think a lot of things you were talking about now are things which are in the hands of the asylum office. The, the, the asylum uh, support office is, of course, a very important part of this, uh, but it's a new agency, it's a quite small agency, it cannot do everything. So the, the thought, but, but it's still you know, on, on the table to, to fine-tune and to negotiate also with the European Parliament, is to introduce in the Dublin Convention, as a part of the asylum system, some sort of early, early warning mechanism and an evaluation mechanism done regularly in all member states to, to do a health check of the, the asylum systems. And, and thereby, when we do find a problem, very early mobilize all the tools. EASO is one important part here, but we have other additional tools also in order to support such a country. So, so EASO is important, but this is broader, and it's part of the, the asylum package, hopefully. Okay, I don't see any more hands, so thank you very much. We can maybe take that uh, bilateral uh, uh, question. So, so thank you very much. Thank you. Hvor er det som gjelder for et land? Nei, hvor er det som? Bussen går herifrån. Hotellet kl. 18.30. Ok.